Morning. My name is Craig Willis and my colleague Sergius Boba here. We're from the European Centre for Minority Issues and today we're going to present an overview of the International Association of Minority Language Media Research. Uh, the presentation of a new global network of experts working in the field of minority language media. Um, a, a brief overview of our presentation. We will first um, discuss the history of minority language media as a research topic to set the background uh, of how this association has, has been grounded. Uh, then to discuss more uh, in detail of the formation of um, the association, its intentions, and the actors, members. Uh, we will then move on to discuss the work to date over the last two years. And then finally, the, the plans for the future of the association and um, why it's of relevance to minority language media stakeholders. Regarding the history of minority language media as a research topic, the initial publications began to emerge in the early 1990s with edited volumes uh, such as Riggins in 1992 or Brown in 1996, um, as well as standalone articles discussing the purpose of minority language media such as by Cormac or um, in the Catalan case, uh, Jeffrey. Then in the 2000s, this was followed by probably the most uh, seminal book to, to date at that time, 2007, edited by Cormac and Honigan, entitled Minority Language Media. Um, and this featured some key concepts which have been applied since, such as Tom Mooring's chapter on functional completeness. Um, but also this saw an expansion beyond Europe in the 2000s and 2010s um, with uh, texts on indigenous languages in Africa and Latin America. And then in 2010s, the shift has started to move to switch into digital context, into the digital context, social media and social media, such as the, the edited volume by Jones and Uribe Youngblood, um, as well as chapters by Daniel Cunliffe, Tom Mooring, and uh, as well as Belma and Glass. So continuing on the theoretical aspects, uh, we would first like to mention the way uh, minority languages and minority language media are understood by the, by the association. So what are minority language media according to us? <clears throat> and the understanding of minority language media proposed by the International Association for Minority Language Media Research uh, consists of the following elements. So minority language media are all media such as social media, non-professional, volunteer or user-generated media, factual and journalism, audiovisual, fiction, etc., across all platforms and in all parts of the world. And we believe that this <coughs> approach involving all types of media produced uh, in the top-down context and bottom-up context is very important, and of course the global approach. So we cover, we, our ambition is to cover all media, all minority language media produced in basically all corners of the, of the world. And in terms of, <clears throat> in terms of social aspect concerning the production, so who's producing those media, uh, the association defines this as follows. So MLM are media produced by all language communities who self-define as minority, minoritized or non-hegemonic, including those who self-define as indigenous. It is not confined to written or to spoken languages and oral or non-written languages, as well as signed non-spoken languages are included. So across linguistic formats, we are also very, very broad. And I think perhaps it's important to highlight, highlight here different aspects of minoritization of a given language. So we involve communities who are minority because they are numerically inferior, but we also involve communities who are minoritized as speakers of a given language where instances of oppression and other similar situation can be, can be involved. Um, it is also important to perhaps answer the question of why minority language media matter, why they matter for minorities, and as a consequence why they matter for research community. And perhaps here we would like to highlight five crucial aspects that, that orient our, or our research. And this brief reflection is based on theoretical approaches proposed by Brown in 1996 and Cormac in 2004. So minority language media 
matter, they are important for minority, uh, minority communities because they of course have symbolic significance for linguistic minorities. We think that perhaps one of the important features of that, of that element is the ability of the minorities to cope with the contemporary world in all its dimensions. So minorities can produce media discussing basically world in all its all its aspects, so content is important. Economic aspect <clears throat> is not to be overlooked either. Uh, minority language media in ideal con ideally should provide attractive job opportunities for members of linguistic minorities. So it should be economically potentially attractive you know, to work in sectors <clears throat> producing media related content in, in non-majority languages. Uh, Creation of a deliberative space, this is also very significant. So minority language media are spaces in which minorities can discuss among themselves different position, intellectu positions, intellectual issues, topics of relevance, and perhaps reach a certain level of consensus that can be afterwards also presented to majority uh, communities. Uh, visibility. Another important aspect, so visibility of a given linguistic minority can be obtained through relatively well-functioning functioning minority language media outlets. This might be of importance in political context, context, but also in the budgetary sense. So strong media can argue, and argue for better support of a given minority community. Better, better financial conditions in which a given minority operates, but also true MLM minorities can also be more vocal because they can present their voice vis-a-vis <coughs> -vis other stakeholders, other, their, their partners. Uh, last but not least is of course the cultural significance of, uh, of minority language media. So minority language media outlets, they produce cultures of minorities and in minority languages. And in that way, they of course significantly contribute to the cultural sustainability of a given, of a given minority uh, community. Um, with this, we, we stop our broad theoretical reflection uh, <clears throat> linked to the, to the scientific grounding of the association. Um, and perhaps now, a couple of words on the history in which the association was formed. So um, International Association for Minority Language Media Research is a fairly recent thing. It was formed in uh, the second half of 2019 in Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, during a conference devoted to, to topics related to minority language media. The title of the conference was Crowded Out or Limitless, Limitless Horizons. It was, co it was a co-organized co event by the University of Edinburgh and at Japan Basque Institute, an institution working towards the strengthening of the, of the Basque language. So the association was born there, <clears throat> there and then. Um, in terms of the reasons behind the creation of the association, we think that it's important to, to highlight a few, few issues. Um, the context should not, be, should not be overlooked and perhaps in that sense it's it's, it's important to, to, to again highlight the issue that the, the, the association was, was created in Western European context. So there is, some, <clears throat> uh, uh, there, is, there is some kind of an imbalance concerning research outputs uh, in the field of minority language media research. Uh, a substantial part of, of those are produced in the Western context. Uh, due to structural issues concerning uh, budgetary means, but also academic infrastructure, research infrastructure. So the whole field is very much Western focused. We believe that this imbalance should be addressed by the, by the association. Uh, in this context, of course, we try to uh, work as much as possible towards the exchange of research outputs and research ideas coming from different parts of the, of the globe and co colleagues operating in, in different sociocultural, sociopolitical contexts. Um, it is also important for the association to bring closer together not only researchers but also communities uh, within which we conduct our, our research. This is important because uh, MLM studies are very much uh, are very much linked to, to, to the concept of the applied research. So we interact very intensely with the communities that produce media, with media producer, producers. So in that sense, this is a dialogue between those who produce media, but also those who research media. Sometimes, sometimes those, those roles overlap in some, in some instances. Um, of course, 
through comparative approaches, we can also better understand the context in which minority language media operate. Um, we also believe that the research on MLM is important in such a sense that true media, as was already suggested in the brief theoretical overview, true media and discourses produced in minority media, uh, minorities can argue uh, in favor of access to other rights. So this is important in such a sense that media presence, the content producing media, can further uh, enhance the, the level of support for minority communities because also through this they can present their needs and, uh, and so on. And last but not least, sharing of best practices. We very much believe that uh, you can find examples of good prax practices across the world, not only in Europe, not only, not only in Northern America and so on, and we should also uh, try to create an intensive debate on this particular aspect. In terms of uh, association members, as you can see from this list, um, there is a, a, a number of scholars from varying institutions, and many of these were in the conference, conference uh, in Edinburgh in 2019, but also many have joined over the course of the last two years. And when we overlap some of the um, activities and events, you can see this is opportunities for people to join the member. Uh, membership. So it's also important to say that this is uh, uh, it's an open list. We welcome new members. Um, so it's sort of something that's uh, growing as the activities take place. Um, and you can also see in terms of what, what expertise uh, are covered or represented within this list. Um, this covers an array of different um, geographical spheres, but also uh, expertise on different formats. So in some of these spheres we have people that are experts on TV or radio, but in others perhaps more on newspapers uh, and also on social media. So that's also a mix of public and private sector institutions that uh, such scholars uh, focus their work on. Um, in terms of linguistic spheres covered, um, there is a mix of uh, kin states and non-kin state minorities. Uh, there's also a mix of high and low number percentage of speakers. Um, and there's also representation of indigenous languages. So this broadly includes members from West, Central and Northern Europe, but also from Africa, from Latin America and from New Zealand. So as uh, Sergius mentioned earlier, the association really aims to connect a beyond a Eurocentric focus. Um, and then in terms of the output over the last two years, um, much of this has been in events, which we will turn to on the next slide, but in terms of um, publications, there was, uh, Sergius and I conducted a COVID-19 interview series across 10 different spheres. Um, and this helped us to grow the network some of these interviewees have joined the association since. Um, this, we, in terms of output, this was uh, 10 blog posts in 2020 and subsequent content for workshops and eventually um, publications to follow. Uh, there's also been individual projects from researchers in the network which contribute to the the field of minority language media research, uh, the documentary in Wales edited volume um, is, is one example of this, and also a special issue um, which is edited by Miran Manias and includes an article from John Walsh. These are all examples of, of different members in the association um, and we expect more to follow in the, in the coming years as well. Yeah, so uh, we turn now to uh, the events uh, organized or co-organized by, by our association. And this is, of course, the overview covering uh, years from 2019 until, until basically the present moment. Uh, so October 2021. Um, and here <clears throat> we divide those into two categories, so internal events and, and external, external events. Now, this may sound like a long list, but on the other hand, I think it also gives a good idea of, of what are we doing, what members of the association are, are doing. Um, so in terms of in, internal events, 
Uh, in January 2021, uh, we organized a workshop during which, with Craig, we presented the findings of, the, of our interview series uh, focused upon minority language media in the context of COVID-19. Of course, if you look at the date, it's, 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 it's already visible that what was covered were the initial lockdowns and the, the moment when the crisis really uh, really came to the to the field. Uh, we are thinking about the follow-up to, to this study, but this is another issue. Uh, then in February, uh, there was another workshop, and this, I think, nicely illustrates the, the globality and, and multilingual, multi-contextual aspect of the association. So we had a workshop on uh, the, the on indigenous, indigenous minority language media and the concept of indigeneity. This was uh, hosted by uh, our colleagues Abidun Salabu and Enrique Uribe Youngblood. Um, then in May, uh, a book launch took place uh, concerning the volume documentary in Wales. So you perhaps remember from the definitions we provided at the beginning, we cover really different formats what covers also uh, different kinds of documentaries. In this context, uh, the book was focused on the documentary production in Wales. The volume was uh, co-edited by Duffet Sills Jones and uh, Erin Huff Gruffet Jones. Um, there will be more to come, and I will say a couple of words about this later. Uh, and then in September, uh, there was our annual meeting during which we, we made and we discussed what has happened in the previous year, planned activities for the following, following one, but also welcomed new members, which highlights the point that Craig made that this is, a, this is a, a, an open association and we are looking for members from different linguistic uh, contexts. Um, in terms of external uh, events, uh, in March 2021, the association was really quite visible during the, during the 17th International Conference on Minority Langu Languages, so ICML. Uh, the event was supposed to take place in Bilbao, but yeah, unfortunately, due to, the, due to the circumstances known to all of us, it had to be, it had to be conducted online. Uh, and members of the association, among them Craig, uh, Miren Manias Munoz, but also Elin, uh, uh, Elin Jones, uh, Enrique Uribe Youngblood, Abidun Salav, and myself, we, we, we delivered presentations covering different, different uh, topics that we are dealing uh, with in the context of, uh, of uh, MLM. Um, I think it's important to also highlight the fact that uh, the association was uh, involved in uh, in the, um, uh, in, in the most recent edition of the ECMI summer school. In that sense, that highlights the fact that we are also want to share our, no our knowledge in educational context. Uh, and in, this in relation to this particular event, uh, the module organized or rather co-organized by the, by the association consisted of a uh, presentation delivered by Ellen Jones providing an overview of the of the field and different, of course, also theoretical concepts associated with the field of minority language media. Uh, there was also a workshop hosted and organized by Enrique Uribe Youngblood on different indigenous contexts covering Latin American linguistic situations, but also African ones. It was very enthusiastically received by the by the participants, and then. Uh, our local colleague uh, Hauke Heyen from the Europa University at Flensburg uh, delivered a presentation on the uses of North Frisian in the context of uh, social, uh, social media. Um, on the 3rd of November 2021, um, we have also co-organized, um, in that sense, the association and ECMI, our host institution, an online talk um, concerning minority languages and media landscapes in Africa, Europe, and Latin America with additional explanation of what was the point of this. So between global and regional dynamics, and during this event we tried to identify <clears throat> regional approaches to minority language media and also in relation to, to language ma maintenance uh, and similar, similar topic. So, so I hope that this gives, uh, this gives not only a, an extensive overview of our activities, but, but also illustrates the intensity of, of, the, of the association's work, you know, and the different, different topics that we try to cover. Um, in terms of the future, uh, I think it's important to mention uh, a few things. 
uh, events again come to the come to the fore uh, because. Thanks to this, we can reach different audiences, but also attract new members to the association. So in terms of those organized internally by, 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 the, by the association, um, we should kick off a series of uh, seminars involving PhD students working on minority language media and in different linguistic, linguistic contexts. Um, and this will be a recurring activity throughout, throughout the upcoming months. Um, it is also important to mention uh, a follow-up to the Edinburgh conference, historical Edinburgh conference, if I can put it this way. Uh, so the next MLM conference uh, will be hosted at the Europa Universitat Flensburg uh, uh, on the 31st of March and the 1st of April 2022. The works on this are very much advanced. Uh, abstracts are screened, accepted. Uh, in the upcoming weeks, we will be, the organizational committee will be putting together a final program of this. Um, uh, another, the next one, the following conversation, and this is important to, to, to mention because we are thinking about this in the, in the biannual cycles. So the, 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 the next one, uh, should take place in 2024 and to reflect the globality of the association we are thinking about traveling with the conference to the context outside of Europe. There is currently an idea of hosting it probably in one of the African countries. Botswana was on the list but of course we will see how, 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 the, how the global situation will look at that point um, in time. Uh, in, terms, in terms of external events, there is the upcoming uh, ICML conference, which will take place in 2023 in Wales. And this is important because the organizing committee and the persons who are very much involved in the preparations concerning ICML are also persons actively involved in works of the association. So we are thinking about organizing a panel or two, maybe a, 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 maybe a, round ta a series of round tables. Um, and, but of course, there's still a bit of time until that moment, so, so we, will, we will have more information, so information on this in the upcoming uh, months. In terms of the longer term aims of the, of, the, of the association and its relevance to the field of minority language media, of course, as I think every scientific association, we, are, we, we, we want to work on, on funding applications in order to, 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 to be even more intense when it comes to research outputs and the coverage of different linguistic contexts. Publications, of course, uh, naturally should, uh, should follow up. Um, in this context, perhaps I should mention the second volume of the series focused on the documentaries. And in the second volume, um, if you visit our association's website, there is more information on this, but the second volume is supposed to, uh, its ambition is to cover documentaries produced uh, in different uh, linguistic contexts. So we, we want, the, the focus won't be on the given linguistic setup, but something more comparative in, uh, in spirit. Of course, more institutional networking, and I think in this context it's important to, to be with you today at this event, because you are the, the audience, the people, practitioners, uh, scientists, who are very much uh, our colleagues with whom we would like to, uh, to work. Um, in that context, I think it's important to highlight again the, the willingness of the association to work closer, to bring closer together practitioners and academics working on the field of minority language media. We are also very keen on exchange, on the exchange of expertise. And in that sense, for example, we can, uh, we can mention uh, MIDAS, the association of the minority language newspapers published in European linguist, minority language context, uh, where there's a lot of expertise, a lot of information, a lot of experiences which might be very useful for us researchers. Um, and I think, yeah, that's mostly all when it comes to this brief overview of the, of the, of the, activity, of the association and its activities. So very, we, we look very much forward to, to staying in touch with you, to welcome new members, to work with you in different, in different contexts. Um, if you are keen to learn more about the association, uh, please don't hesitate and go visit our uh, profile on Twitter. Um, you can see it on the on the on the on the uh, on the screen, uh, hopefully. Um, and then the website is a good source of information. Of course, it's hosted by the by the by the university uh, 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 by the University of Wales Trinity St David. 
And of course, there's always a possibility of sending an email either to me or Craig in order to know more about us, our activities, and the future activities that we are planning. Thank you very much for your attention.